Hey everyone, welcome back to the Salamander Wilds, and welcome to part two of this care guide. In the previous part of this care guide, I went over a detailed introduction into what newts and salamanders are, and some other details pertaining to how they behave. That way, anyone that's looking to get into this hobby, or just wants to know a little bit more about the animals that they're keeping, has a better understanding of newts and salamanders. And if you haven't already seen the first part to this care guide, I will be leaving the link to that video in the description below, along with all the other resources that I used for this video. So be sure to check those out as they contain a lot of helpful and useful information. And so to kick off part two of the care guide, we're going to start discussing requirements to actually provide a long, happy, healthy life for these animals. And to really get the most out of providing proper care for newts and salamanders, closely replicating some of the things that newts or salamanders would actually encounter in their natural environment will ultimately lead to the longevity of your animal in captivity. I think a good place to start off is discussing temperature requirements. Temperature requirements are absolutely critical to maintain correctly and understand when it comes to keeping any animal, whether it's a snake or a lizard, and newts and salamanders are no different. And yet, one of the major differences is the temperature, because unlike snakes, turtles, lizards, newts and salamanders actually require much cooler temperatures. Now, the actual temperature requirements will always depend on the species, but a general rule of thumb is that most species definitely find a comfortable range between 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And this applies to both terrestrial and aquatic species. Newts and salamanders also don't require special lighting the same way that reptiles do. So this is really important to keep in mind because temperatures that are too high can be detrimental towards your newt or salamander. Even species such as the blue-tailed firebelly newt that do prefer things on the warmer side also have their limits. So keep in mind that newts and salamanders generally need cooler temperatures. Even their natural environments provide clues as to how these animals should be kept in captivity such as aquatic lungless salamanders that require clean and cool flowing streams in order to survive. And they're often found under rocks or branches where it's nice and cool as well. And in a similar fashion, this also applies to terrestrial species, where they live in cool woodland environments often being found under logs or branches, or even in some cases burrowing underground. So this means that you won't be needing special lighting or a heat source, but of course, there are some exceptions. Some species do prefer things slightly on the warmer side, so just keep that in mind. But overall, it is important to keep things nice and cool for these animals, and especially during the summer months when it can get way too hot for newts and salamanders. And there's actually a variety of different cooling methods that can be used, which I won't be going over here in this care guide, but I will leave a link in the description below to a source that does discuss these methods. So up to this point, I've discussed what kind of animals newts and salamanders are, what their behavior is like, and what sort of temperature requirements that they'll need. And with an understanding of those details, we can now move on to proper setup for the enclosure of your animal. And for this part, I'll be discussing two different types of setups, terrestrial and aquatic. And that's because newts and salamanders are either primarily aquatic or terrestrial. Although some are semi-aquatic, but I think it's best to keep it simple here and just discuss setups that are more than likely going to be used as it pertains to species that are more commonly available in the hobby. And it's also really important to understand if your animal is terrestrial or aquatic because your animal's needs will depend on the lifestyle that they lead. And unfortunately, if their setup is not catered 
to how they should be living in the wild, more than likely this will be detrimental to them. So first, you'll need to know exactly which stage of life your animal is in and whether it's terrestrial or aquatic. And that will determine the setup that you'll need. And as an example, we can use the Eastern Newt to determine which sort of setup we'll need. And so the Eastern Newt has three different life stages. First is the aquatic larva that emerges from the egg. And at this stage of life, this animal is completely aquatic. It's equipped with external feathery gills and a paddle-like tail. But as this animal grows, it will start to grow legs as well. It's front legs first, back legs last, eventually transitioning to the red eft stage, which is a completely terrestrial animal. Something that was once aquatic and now is completely hydrophobic and can actually drown in water at this stage of life. And at this stage in life, this animal will actually take a few years to mature before it becomes an adult. And upon transitioning to an adult, this animal has undergone yet again another drastic change. As an adult, the Eastern Newt is once again aquatic. Newts and salamanders can lead a variety of complex lifestyles depending on the species and stage of life, so it is critical to understand where your animal falls under these conditions when setting up its enclosure. So the first setup I'll discuss is the terrestrial enclosure. And I also did a video on how to build one of these enclosures, and I will be leaving the link to that video in the description below, so be sure to check that out as well. And so without a full rehash of that previous video, there are some important details that I'm gonna go over here in this care guide and go through a brief rundown of what we're gonna need for this type of enclosure. First and foremost, you're going to need a secure enclosure. Even terrestrial species can climb the side of your enclosure and can escape if it's not secure. So just make sure that there's no small cracks or openings that they can slip through. And once you've got that sorted out, you can move on to choosing your substrate. Choosing the correct substrate is also very important. You don't want to use a substrate that can be potentially harmful if swallowed. So anything with gravel or wood chips is usually a bad choice. I find that a mixture of topsoil and coconut fiber tends to work very well. This sort of mixture is also great at retaining moisture, which is important for newts and salamanders. A substrate like this also allows for any salamanders that like to burrow to do so. Adding leaf litter and a place for your newt or salamander to hide, such as cork bark, will also help to make your animal feel more secure within the enclosure. Now, Water and moisture is also an important detail surrounding terrestrial setups. Moisture is still important for terrestrial newts and salamanders, especially lungless salamanders. The substrate should be kept moist, but not wet or muddy. Conditions that are too wet could potentially even cause skin infections. A small water bowl can be used, but just make sure to keep the water level shallow enough so if your animal does choose to utilize it, you don't run the risk of drowning. And so those are the basics of setting up a terrestrial enclosure for newts and salamanders, but there's plenty of other ways to go about this as well. And I'll leave a link in the description below that showcases some other terrestrial setups. And with that, I'll move on to aquatic enclosures. And of course the approach to setting up these enclosures will be no different than the terrestrial setups. We'll need to closely replicate an environment that your animal would encounter in the wild. But of course, to start, we're going to need some sort of enclosure that has a secure lid to prevent any escape. And once you've done this, we can move on to substrate. The approach to choosing substrate is going to be the same as before. We don't want to use anything that can be harmful if swallowed. So generally, gravel is not a good choice of substrate to use, especially if your newt or salamander does swallow it and they can't pass it through, it could be fatal. 
so gravel is probably best to avoid altogether. I like to use aquatic soil because it promotes healthy plant growth if you use live plants, and it also gives your enclosure a more natural look. Sand can also be used in aquatic setups, but it doesn't provide any nutrients for any plants that you might use. And another good approach is to just go with a bare bottom setup altogether with no substrate. It might not look as visually pleasing, but it works and it's safe. If any rocks are going to be used in the setup, just make sure that they are bigger than the size of your animal's head so that your newt or salamander can't swallow it. Now, the next thing worth mentioning here is something that only applies if your species isn't fully aquatic, unlike something like an axolotl. We'll need some sort of object to use as a resting area so that your animal can crawl up onto land if it chooses to. Even though some species, such as the Eastern Newt, will spend the majority of their time in the water, they will still go onto land occasionally if they choose to. And also, if an animal that leads a mostly aquatic lifestyle starts to go onto land more often, it could be an indicator of poor water quality or some other issue. And with that, we can move on to the next part, which is also very important, and that is the use of plants in your aquatic setup. And plants, whether live or not, are very important to making your animal feel secure within the enclosure. Newts and salamanders, whether terrestrial or aquatic, need to feel secure within their enclosure, and aquatic plants in this case will definitely help to promote this. But live plants especially, which is something that I prefer, also just helps to give the enclosure a more natural look as well. And plants also act as a great egg-laying surface if your animals breed. And even though newts and salamanders themselves don't require special lighting, if you're going to use the live plants, then you'll definitely need some sort of lighting to promote healthy plant growth. An LED aquarium light will work just fine, but there are also other LED lights that are more fine-tuned for plant growth as well. And so with all those details covered, I'm going to wrap up this part of the care guide here. I broke down many important topics and details on how to properly house a newt or salamander, whether it's terrestrial or aquatic. And the key takeaway is always do as much research as possible when keeping any of these animals and always aim to replicate some of the qualities of their natural environment in captivity in order to promote a long and healthy life for your newt or salamander. And even though these are some generalized details about how to keep a newt or salamander properly, each species is still unique, so make sure the setup that you are creating is catered to that species. And if you enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, let me know what you thought, and also please subscribe, your support is very much appreciated. And if you haven't already, head on over to check out the Salamander Wilds Instagram page where I post Newton Salamander photography. So until next time everyone, I hope you'll all join me for another adventure into the Salamander Wilds.